Fidelity Bank PLC, in collaboration with the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, has given a nod of economic diversification as a panacea to the current economic recession in Nigeria. At a public forum in Lagos, the management of the bank says that exports in the non-oil sector would help drive economic growth. Enhancing the power sector here. To as the economic downturn bites and sub-Saharan Africa's largest economies continue to struggle with lower commodity revenues weighing on growth in the region, players in the service industry, owners of micro, small and medium enterprises and panelists are gathered here to deliberate on reviving the Nigerian economy from recession. The panelists at this forum jointly put together by Fidelity Bank and Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce want those in the export sector to know their products and services well enough to function profitably in the sector. They also believe that technology will help drive the export sector. So many entrepreneurs in Nigeria don't understand the importance of a website. Instagram is not your website. There are no data, there's no data analytics that comes from that for you that's transferable to a potential investor or a potential buyer. It is very important that we, that we are investing in the marketing of our website, of our, of our businesses. You have to have a website. It is 2016. The management of Fidelity Bank says if Nigeria will compete favorably in the global markets, non-all exports is the viable alternative. Export is the only way now, and the government has realized that, and they are giving it all the attention that it needs. I can tell you that from, my, from the position where I occupy and what I know the government is doing. Export is critical because it will generate the needed foreign exchange that you can then be able to service other related activities. And for me, that's quite critical. There's been several deliberations like this on the need to diversify the nation's economy. Expectations are that the action plan will move from deliberations to implementation in order to put the nation's economy back on the path of growth. Let's now move on to the exciting world of sports with Charles Aruka. Welcome to Sports News. Super Eagles head coach Gernot Rohr has been mandated to assist the coaches of the Super Falcons and Falknets as they prepare for their international competitions. This followed the dismal performance of the Flamingos at the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup in Jordan where they crashed out of the tournament without scoring a goal. The technical director of the Nigeria Football Federation, Beatrice Bewarang, said the involvement of the German tactician is to improve the female teams at international and continental tournaments. The Super Falcons, who are African champions, will compete at the 2016 Afghan in Cameroon next month, while the Falknets will participate at the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Papua New Guinea, also in November. In club football, Nigeria Professional League champions Enugu Rangers have postponed a scheduled trophy tour around the city of Enugu. Rangers ended a 32-year wait for a major trophy when they finished top in the 2015-2016 Nigeria Professional Football League season. The new Nigerian champions are expected to be hosted by the Enugu state governor, Ifangi Ugwangi. They represent Nigeria in next year's CAF Champions League. Over in Europe, the head of Russia's Olympic Committee, Alexander Zukov, intends to step down in the biggest change at the top of Russian sport since a doping scandal led the country's track and field athletes to being excluded from the Rio Olympics. President Vladimir Putin said late on Tuesday that Zukov had told him he wanted to leave the role so he could focus on another job. A report commissioned by the World Anti-Doping Agency concluded that Russia had run a state-sponsored program to give performance-enhancing drugs to elite athletes and to cover up positive doping tests. In tennis, Rafael Nadal has suffered a shocking exit at the Shanghai Masters. Nadal lost 6-3, 7-6 in the second round to Viktor Troitschki, his first ever defeat to the Serb and just the latest setback for the fading Spanish great. Meanwhile, Andy Murray continued his impressive form today 
with a 6-3, 6-2 win over American Steve Johnson, also at the Shanghai Masters. The world number two will face Frenchman Lucas Pouilly on Thursday for a place in the quarterfinals. Murray was never really tested against the world number 24 Johnson as he threw down three aces and 16 winners. The Scotsman converted three out of six break points. Again, It's game set and match in sports news and back to Gimba with the rest of the news at 10. Burundi's lawmakers have thrown their support behind President Pierre Nkurunziza voting in favor of the country withdrawing from the International Criminal Court. The vote is in defiance of an ICC preliminary investigation into violence that erupted last April when President Pierre Nkurunziza announced he would be running for another term in office. Last month, a United Nations report named officials accused of killing, imprisonment, torture, rape and other forms of sexual violence against the opposition. The government in retaliation banned the three investigators assigned to carry out the probe. The ICC says that 450 people have been killed since the unrest last year and thousands more have fled their homes. Now that lawmakers have voted, the bill to remove Burundi from the court's jurisdiction will proceed to the upper house of legislature and then be signed by the president. The withdrawal process could take about a year. And the main news again. The suicide bomber today attacked Ma, uh, Muna community near Meduguri, the Borno state capital. The National Emergency Management Agency in Borno has confirmed that at least eight people were killed, while many others sustained injuries. And that wraps up the news at 10 tonight. On behalf of everyone here, have a splendid night, friends. Good night.